Hey, you there! I want to remind everybody that if you end up liking this video, please consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. And right now, YouTube says that over 90% of people that watch my videos aren't subscribed, so it would really help, and with that... Hello everybody, I'm Joel Homie, your guys' host for another great episode of the Joel Homie Show series, Minecraft Monday, where today I'm going to show you guys how I built my spawn. Or rather, actually, a spawner that is an XP form. My spawn is actually on the other side of my sort of world over there behind me. But behind me over here is actually my XP form that is made from a spawner that spawns zombies. Not just one, but actually two spawners. So I'm going to go ahead and turn around here and uh, take you guys through I, how I actually built this. So that if you guys want to, you can actually build one. So this world, while I was actually exploring a nearby ravine that is below here, I actually found a little opening that led to not one, but two zombie spawners. So I put torches around them, transformed them, put water sources that go underneath them so that when zombies spawn, I lead them into one concentrated spot where I can then actually collect their drops and they collect the XP from them as well with the help of my diamond sword with fire aspect and a bunch of other stuff as you can see there. So in here, you can actually see that I have a sort of like a pathway that goes down some stairs with some torches, and then in here we have some moldy cobblestone, and right here you can see one of the two spawners. Here is one of the two that are actually in here. So you can see here it's just a dark room with the zombies actually spawning, and they drop there into a little spot. Now unfortunately it looks like one of the actual cobblestone has dropped into a uh, the actual uh, sort of water source down there. But once you are actually all the way done going through here, you actually find a ladder, which leads down to the main room. So you can see here I've just decorated it a little bit with the sort of system that I use to collect the drops, which I'll talk about later, that is controlled by a on and off uh, redstone power switch. And then we have an enchanting table, because XP form, I usually want to do enchanting, which is the main reason that I'm usually here, so I put an enchanting table. And then really quick, I actually want to go ahead and uh, turn my difficulty to peaceful so that I don't have zombies uh, doing the sounds in the background. And then here we have an AFK sort of a room where you can just stand here and close the door. Usually I actually have to put a block in front of it because I usually have my difficulty mode on hard so that I can spawn the most amount of zombies and in hard mode zombies can uh, break down the doors. And then here we have some chests where I put all of the chain mail and iron and also just some general other valuables. But anyway, here you can see instead of having a lava spot where I throw all of the non-valuables like rotten flesh, I actually have a water source so that, say, if I accidentally uh, drop my sword in it, I can go ahead and I can actually go retrieve it and it doesn't get burnt up in the lava. And then over here on the other side, next to the on and off switch that is uh, given, gives instructions on how to use the drop system, you have a anvil, a grindstone, and a crafting table right next to the entrance for the enchanting room and the ladder that goes back up to the hallway, which is the exit. And then here you can actually see that when you turn this on, there is actually a redstone repeater system going up back here that is just a redstone repeater pulse system that actually is connected to a little uh, dropper system here so that when the drops actually go in here, they end up actually going down through a little system with a dropper that is then actually powered through the system back here. As you can see when I turn this on, we have a very simple system with some redstone torches that actually just repeats a one pulse signal that goes around in a circle and as you can see here goes down and powers that dropper that I was actually just showing earlier which you can find right here and unfortunately I've uh, made a boo boo and I've uh, let a water source get to the redstone I'll go ahead and fix that real quick and we'll go ahead and uh, keep on talking about this but in other words, this is the system that I like to use for my system here, so that I can actually collect all of the drops. So going back through here where you're actually supposed to be and not in the redstone area, once you turn that off, you can see that the ticking stops, which is what it actually tells you to do here. It says, uh, chest input, turn off when you hear ticking or clicking. And once it is actually done picking up all the drops from the zombies, you can then actually see all of the drops that go through this hopper into this uh, double chest and then go into two more double chests so we utilize a lot of storage here so this first one 
is just a bunch of drops from the zombies, and then this other one is the same thing. Now, if you wanted to actually organize these and make a organized chest system, you could simply just take, like, maybe rotten flesh and do something like this and just fill the entire thing, and that would do a uh, just as an equally good job because then it would sort only rotten flesh because nothing else would fit in here. But once I actually uh, do collect all these by just shift-clicking them into my inventory, I simply just take them over here, and I throw them into the water source, and as I said, I use water because if I throw my sword in there, well, I couldn't get my sword back if it was lava. Now, of course, netherite does exist, but I like diamonds uh, better than netherite because of the diamond's color. But anyway, walking up through here, uh, let's go ahead and show you guys what I've actually done for the system. So here we have one of the spawners. This is not the one that I showed you guys earlier. This is actually the other spawner. So you can see here, this is an identical room. It's very dark, and it's just, I believe this is actually a 4x4 four four space, or actually, excuse me, a 5x5 five five space, with water completely surrounding it so that no matter where the zombies spawn, they always go down this little path, go down this water source, and they then end up going down to the spot where I can then hit them with my sword. Their drops will land right here and go into the system, and I can collect the XP and the drops. And then, of course, the other one here is the same, but it's a little bit different. And then you can see here that I actually did have to uh, utilize this very specifically, and this particular spot is really in this particular spot because it has to be exactly in the spot otherwise this water source wouldn't work because water sources only go so far and unless you want to expand them with uh, using signs and a bunch of stuff like that you have to do something like this where you actually go a certain amount of blocks so that you don't have it go too far or too little because if it was to go too far the zombies would actually be pushed too much or too little. And then, as I said up here, this is just an identical setup to the other spawner that I just showed you. But obviously, this is the one that I had actually showed you guys earlier through that little slot where we actually, uh, this is actually the on the other side of the wall for the actual hallway that leads into the initial sort of, uh, XP and drop sort of uh, room where you can actually get stuff which is this room right here and then actually retrieving my cobblestone it should be in here somewhere uh, unfortunately it's not so I don't actually know where it went but either way there is how I actually built up my spawner room and how you guys can do it as well so what I actually had to use to build this was a lot of different supplies but you could make it look uh, quite a lot different than I have it here you could use dorite quartz different blocks, you could use sea lanterns or maybe redstone lamps, you don't have to use torches, you don't have to put an enchanting room, you could make this whatever you want out of it, as long as you're always getting what you want with actually being able to get XP and setting up a nice system to actually get the drops from the zombies as well. And with me being sort of like a redstone geek in Minecraft, of course I did have to utilize redstone and make a little uh, sort of one pulse uh, repeater system that is actually allowing me to pick up the drops without me actually having to fill up my inventory and then having to go drop it all over again. Which is very nice considering that it's annoying when all of the drops that you get immediately go into your inventory and you have to keep on dropping them to keep on killing zombies and getting the XP. Unlike this where I have here, which it, it'll just simply goes into one spot where I can then, whenever I want, sort through it without any hassle. But anyway, there is today's episode of the Joel Emma Show series, Minecraft Monday. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video because uh, this is something that was very useful to me. Getting XP for practically free, which is what this is almost doing. And also getting a lot of drops, especially from zombies, which can actually get you all types of things. Going all the way from iron to gold to tridents to armor, even you know, chain meal, gold. There's all types of stuff you can get from zombies, and on the other side of my map, I do actually also have a skeleton spawn XP farm, but it's only one spawner, not two. And I have actually found some people that have set up three spawner XP farms, which that gives you a absolutely amazing amount of uh, produce, including drops and XP. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I was Joel Homie, your guys' host for today. And with all that being said, if you guys enjoyed today's video, 